Alpha Theta have just switched up the entire game when it comes to DJ headphones. Welcome to BeatSource Tech, my name is Mojax and in this episode we look at the HDJ F10s and find out if we're one step closer to a wireless utopia. I haven't really reviewed that many pairs of DJ headphones over the years, and there's one reason for that, there just haven't been that many released. I checked on one big UK retailer's site today, and once you exclude variants, they have less than 20 unique models, and what there absolutely has not been is much in the way of innovation. It could be argued that the market doesn't really want innovation though. The most popular DJ headphone today by quite some margin remains the Sennheiser HD25, the first model of which made its debut in 1988, getting on for 40 years ago, and the design hasn't really changed all that much since then. There are some other contenders who have made inroads over the years, Technics, Vmodo, III and of course Pioneer DJ amongst others, but still the go-to remains the HD25, which was never actually designed for DJing in the first place. Whilst DJ headphones have remained largely stagnant, consumer headphones have transformed dramatically in the past 10 years. With Apple leading the way, most phones don't even have a headphone jack anymore, and wireless Bluetooth has become the standard way in which most people connect their headphones to their devices. Bluetooth, at least in its current form, is never going to work for DJ headphones. Even the latest version of the standard has far too much latency to be useful in situations where timing is critical. And whilst wireless in-ear monitor stage systems have been around for a long time, they are typically UHF based, which means they are bulky and have restrictions on international usage. So I was very excited when I reviewed III's TMA2 Studio Wireless Plus headphones back in 2021. They offered a robust, super low latency digital wireless system which worked great in the studio but sadly they were no good for DJing as the sound broke up at the kind of volume levels required in the booth. They have just announced a DJ specific set coming in early 2025 so it sounds like they've dealt with that and I can't wait to try those. But I have to break the bad news to them, they say on their site they're the first wireless DJ headphones and well, Alpha Theta have just beaten them to it. What we're looking at today is a combination of two products, the HDJ F10 headphones and the HP TX01 transmitter. They're available in one package for $499 in the US or separately with the headphones at $389 and the transmitter at $129. Some price context for that, the Pioneer DJ HDJ X10s, the previous flagship, are around $370 with way less tech, and a pair of Apple's over-ear AirPods Max are $549. So yes, these are pricey, but that's by no means crazy in 2024, especially considering what they can do. I'll start with the headphones themselves. They are big and heavy. Not quite as big as the X10s in fact, but around 30 grams heavier at 356 grams. This is lighter than AirPods Max though, which are 384 grams. You might wonder why I keep mentioning Apple products in a review of DJ headphones. Well, the thing is, with the HDJ F10, Alpha Theta are very much pushing these as a product which not only performs great in the booth, but will also serve your day-to-day -day headphone needs for travel, etc. too, and there is functionality in them which is aimed to make that experience better. For example, aside from the DJ-specific Sonic Link wireless tech, they can also be switched into Bluetooth mode with Bluetooth 5.2, and in that mode they offer active noise cancelling or ANC. Now, I just review DJ kit, not consumer gear, so I have limited context for that. I haven't tried, say, the Bose headphones, which are renowned to have the best ANC, but I do use a pair of Beats Fit Pro earbuds every day, and the noise cancellation on the F10s is definitely superior to those. I didn't fly with them, but I did wear them on a train and in the gym, and the ANC was very good indeed, blocking out most background noise without any weird artifacts. There's also a transparency mode, so you can hear what's going on around you, and and they have a mic which supports voice control with Siri and Google Assistant. Plus you do get physical controls on the left ear cup for adjusting volume and play pause etc. If you're in the Apple ecosystem like me, you do miss out on some of the benefits of Apple's H1 or H2 chips, like automatic device switching and spatial audio, which you get with the company's own brand and Beats headphones, but overall I found the Bluetooth experience with the F10s to be just as good with my iPhone, iPad and MacBook as with any other non-Apple products I've used. We'll come back to the physical design now. These are big, beefy headphones, no doubt about it. They're an over-ear design, but the cups are a bit smaller than the X10s, so they don't quite envelop my whole ear in the same way that those do. I still found them to offer superb isolation from outside noise, though, even when DJing without the ANC available. 
Headphone comfort is a very personal thing. At first I thought the design was a little strange with the cups seemingly at such an angle compared to the headband, but when wearing them that worked nicely for me in use whether DJing or just listening. I have quite a large head and there's no real rotation at the cups which did concern me but I had no problems wearing the F10s for extended periods of time. They never felt crazy tight on my head, holding in place well but without any discomfort. That's helped by the quite thick and well padded faux leather ear pads which are easy to replace. I was very happy to see a spare pair of those included in the box which is a nice touch. Anything made of that material will wear out over time and so should be treated as a consumable. That's one reason I much prefer the headband material used here over the X10s. They had that faux leather which on my pair has eventually worn out but here on the F10s we have a much more durable material and I'm sure that will stay intact much longer. The general build quality seems to be very good with different parts made of metal and plastic, the headband and joints to the cups being metal. I used the F10s for a few weeks not babying them at all and they showed no signs of any wear or damage whatsoever. The cables between the headband and the cups don't appear to be easily replaceable but they are quite thick unlike the more spindly offerings on some other headphones. I was a little disappointed that the F10s only come with a carry bag, not a more solid case like some older Pioneer DJ headphones used to, but it does the job of keeping all the bits together well enough. A quick note on connectivity, they do come with an audio cable for wired use. If you buy the headphones alone, that's a coiled cable, and with the combo pack, a 1.6 meter straight cable. They have 3.5 millimeter plugs on the mixer end with a 6.35 millimeter adapter, and they have a 2.5 millimeter locking connector at the headphone end. As much as I liked the mini XLR connector on the X10s, a 2.5 millimeter cable is much easier to replace on the road, so I dig it. And the USB port for charging is, as you would expect in 2024, USB. SBC. We'll move on to the sound. I'm mentioning the HDJ X10s a lot because until I switched to in-ear monitors, those were my main headphones for the past few years. And I love the sound of them. Very detailed, but still with a ton of low-end kick, which can be lost in some smaller DJ headphones. For the F10s, Alpha Theta have developed a new 40mm driver, which is smaller than the X10s, but still, to my ears, delivers that same combo of accuracy and a powerful low end. It has a composite film diaphragm made of two different materials, and a bass reflex air duct and air chamber to expand those lower frequencies. Frequency response is acclaimed 5Hz to 30kHz, which is much wider than, say, HD25s, and you can really feel that down low. Having AB tested them with the X10s, would I say the F10s sound dramatically better? No, I wouldn't. Any difference is pretty marginal. But to have achieved that level of sound quality with a driver which is 20% smaller is really quite something. So that's the HDJ F10s. Absolutely my favourite headphones to date from the Alpha Theta slash Pioneer DJ stable, just as headphones. But now we need to talk about Sonic Link. That's what Alpha Theta are calling their proprietary 2.4 GHz digital wireless technology. It transmits audio with just 9 milliseconds of latency, which the company claim is unnoticeable. And in use, I would agree with that. Keep in mind that 10 milliseconds is the latency allowed for hearing aids, and so they're coming in under that. In all the hours I used the system, I would never have known they were wireless, apart from, you know, there being no wire, except when I was using them with a microphone. When you're hearing your own voice delayed by even the tiniest amount, you can sense that. But that's a thing with even high-end UHF systems too, which can be as low as 5 milliseconds, so it's not unique to Sonic Link. The transmitter, the HP TX01, is very compact. Smaller in width and height than a 2.5 inch SSD, although a bit thicker, it will tuck into any DJ booth with ease. And as it has a 2.5 millimeter socket on there, you use the regular headphone cable with it, so it doesn't have to be positioned close to the mixer. There's not a whole lot to it physically. It's a small box with that jack socket, a USB-C port for charging, a power slash pairing button, and extra LEDs to show that it's receiving input and the remaining battery. Pairing could not be more simple. Simple. Long press the connect buttons on the transmitter and the headphones and it will connect and a voice will tell you that it's done. Pairing is retained through power cycles so you only need to do that on rare occasions though. Generally you switch on and go. The system does let you take the headphones reasonably far away from the transmitter. Alpha Theta reckon 15 meters unobstructed and my testing pretty much confirmed that. Once you put walls and things in the way, if you're going to the bathroom or something, then the connection might get flaky more quickly but that's to be expected. As for the sound quality over Sonic Link, I really didn't notice any detrimental change compared to using the F10s wired. There is a slight low level hiss, but it's not distracting. I only really picked up on it at all when I stopped sending signal and it went away. During actual playback, it really wasn't noticeable. Again, with most UHF and digital IEM systems, there is some hiss there too. 
And at this point I'll note there are no issues with cranking the volume on the Sonic Link system. If you can't get enough volume out of these for your liking, then you need to see an audiologist immediately. There is plenty there, even in the loudest environment. What really impressed me was how stable the connection was. Unless I did go out of the booth behind a wall or something, it was completely rock solid with no drops, glitches or disconnects in hours of use. Again, if it wasn't for the lack of a wire, I wouldn't have known it was a wireless system I was using just from the experience I was having. I haven't mentioned battery life yet and that's one area where I do think there is still potential for improvement. Not so much in the actual playtimes, I'm quite happy with those. Alpha Theta claim 30 hours for the F10s in Bluetooth mode which is awesome. I never managed to test them for that long but you'll certainly get through the longest of flights. And in Sonic Link mode with the transmitter they claim around 9 hours of playtime and I got that easily. They weren't actually dead at that point so you'll easily manage two fairly long gigs in a weekend without a charge in between. The issue I have is that the charging time is a bit long for my liking. The headphones take 2.5 hours for a full charge, which is okay, but the transmitter takes around 4 hours. You can use the transmitter whilst charging, but Alpha Theta don't really recommend that. The charging is only 5 volt, 1.5 amps, so what I'd love to see is a version which accepted more juice via fast charging or quick charging protocols. At this point, some of you are probably asking why would I want wireless at all? I'm good with a cable and never having to charge stuff, and I hear that. Until I tested those III Studio headphones, I felt that way too. But having tried to DJ with those unsuccessfully, I realised that the extra freedom that wireless headphones offer is just fantastic. Ironically, considering it's such new technology, the DJs who are best served by it are those who play vinyl. No more taking your headphones off or unplugging them just to go and grab a record out of that bag at the far end of the booth. Just wander over there at your leisure. It also looks smarter for you mobile or event DJs with no unsightly cable hanging down. You can step outside the booth and talk to the event planner or the host without unplugging. Whatever kind of DJ you are, it is simply liberating. I'll be honest, I was late to the party with Bluetooth headphones in my day-to-day -day life. Even after Apple took the headphone jack away, I was there, still clinging onto my cable, using adapters and all that. But now when I look at how I use headphones and earbuds every day, the idea that I would be tethered to my device with a bit of wire is just unthinkable. So inconvenient. And so yeah, I do think we'll eventually look back at the time we all used wired headphones in the booth as some arcane way of life. I'm not saying that Alpha Theta's Sonic Link will necessarily be the exact exact tech we all use, they'd need to open it up somewhat for that, but wireless in general. This is all of our futures folks. I can even imagine a time where the transmitter isn't needed. The tech could be built into controllers or mixers as standard, so you'd only need to charge the headphones themselves. On the subject of opening up the system, let's talk about the two elephants in the room. Firstly, we come back to the Sennheiser HD25s. There are a number of reasons that people use those. They're compact and very lightweight. They're relatively affordable, and every component of them can be easily and cheaply replaced by the end user. How many of those boxes do the F10s tick? Well, none. As much as I personally love the heft and solid build of the F10s, it's going to be a big ask for a committed HD25 user to switch up their style of headphones entirely. And secondly, I... Um don't actually use headphones when I DJ anymore. For a couple of years now, I've been using in-ear monitors, specifically custom molded ones from Ultimate Ears. I have fully adapted to the IEM workflow and I'm just not looking to go back. So what I want Alpha Theta to do as soon as possible is offer an HD25 style headphone compatible with Sonic Link. They still sell the HDJ CX, which is that kind of style, so they could redo that design perhaps. But what I'd really love to see more than anything is a belt pack receiver with a 3.5mm a socket on it so I could connect any headphones or in-ear monitors of my choice to it and use that Sonic Link tech. Because to be honest, after testing the F10s, I was so excited by wireless again that I went out and bought a UHF wireless IEM system from Sennheiser. And it works, sure, but it has to be tuned all the time, the transmitter needs wall power, the overall experience is just not as smooth as Sonic Link, despite the higher cost. If Alpha Theta was to make a belt pack kit available tomorrow, I would be the first in the queue to get one. So there you go, my thoughts on the HDJ F10 TX combo from Alpha Theta. Ever since I reviewed the TMA wireless headphones from III, I've been waiting for a product like this to come to market. Low latency wireless headphones, which can handle the volumes required for DJing, and Alpha Theta have absolutely delivered. They certainly aren't a one size fits all solution. Headphones are such a personal thing that no single pair ever could be, but the actual tech inside them 
is so accomplished that I could see a possible wider line of these becoming something of a standard in future, especially if they deliver a belt pack which could be used with in-ear monitors and other headphones. In the comments, tell us what kind of wireless tech you've already integrated into your setups. As far as I can tell, it's mostly mobile DJs who are leading the charge on that, but I'm intrigued to hear about all the ways you guys and girls are cutting the wires out of your DJ lives. Thanks for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you've turned on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.